and instructions and education to patients with low back pain. 85% of people will experience low back pain at some point during their life. Low back pain is very common. It actually occurs in equal frequencies between males and females. It affects all age groups, but it commonly affects people between the ages of 35 to 50 years old. It affects all ethnic groups and all socioeconomic class. Acute low back pain is usually transient and it resolves within a few weeks. Most patients recover quickly without residual loss of function. The patient should receive education and knowledge about the history and the favorable outcome of acute low back pain. It's also important for individuals to learn that 90% of people may develop degenerative changes in the lumbar disc by the age of 50. It's important to differentiate between acute and the chronic low back pain. The natural history, the treatment, and the prognosis is different in both situations. Acute low back pain is defined as low back pain that lasts up to 12 weeks. Chronic low back pain lasts longer than 12 weeks and frequently recurs. In acute low back pain, most patients recover quickly without any residual loss of function. About 90% of the patients return to work within 12 weeks. What causes acute low back pain? It is usually due to muscle or ligament strain. Usually, no specific cause is identified with low back pain, and if the cause is known, the treatment can be directed at the cause. In most cases, the treatment is directed at reducing the pain and improving the function, even if we don't find a cause. When you're dealing with a patient with acute low back pain, make sure there is no red flags, which can signify an underlying serious condition. A patient with acute low back pain will recover even if the low back pain is severe, as long as there is no radiation, no constitutional symptoms, no history of trauma, no neurological deficit, and no bladder or bowel dysfunction. No infection, no tumor, no pathologic reflexes to indicate that they may have cervical spinal cord compression. Sometimes the causes of low back pain can be discogenic pain, disc herniation, arthritis of the facet joints, spinal stenosis, and spondylolisthesis. The patient should also receive education and knowledge about the MRI and that the MRI sometimes lies. There are a lot of people who have positive MRI findings who have no symptoms. That is called false positives. In a healthy patient with acute onset of non-traumatic low back pain, this patient does not need diagnostic imaging before proceeding with the treatment. Patient should receive education and knowledge about the contributing factors to low back pain, which includes certain occupations that require heavy lifting and continuous vibration, driving certain motor vehicles, cigarette smoking, depression and anxiety, sedentary lifestyle, job dissatisfaction, certain sports, and pregnancies. So in addition to reassurance and education to the patient, what other information or instructions should we give the patients? Stop smoking. Ask the patient to stop smoking because smoking is definitely a risk factor for low back pain. Smoking not only affects the circulation and the nutrition of the discs, but it may also have a toxic effect on the discs. 
Patients should try to maintain an ideal body weight. The spine in overweight patients will experience increased loads. A dietary consult may be helpful in that situation. The patient needs to stay in shape. The patient needs to be conditioned and need to be physically fit and improve the cardiovascular fitness by walking, bicycling, swimming, and gradually increase the fitness exercises in frequency and in time. Aerobic exercises help to increase the nutrition of the discs and improve the condition of the muscles. Medications Stop the use of narcotics. Narcotics are addictive and they prevent an effective rehab exercise program. There is strong evidence to support the use of aspirin and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications in addition to appropriate use of muscle relaxants. Patient mobility and therapy. Patients need to do active physiotherapy. The exercise therapy has limited value for the acute low back pain, but has strong value in chronic low back pain. The patient should be active. Patient should move and avoid bed rest. The patient should avoid prolonged sitting. Patient need to stand, stretch, and move around. Avoid any exercises that aggravate the back pain. You may use heat or hot showers to relieve back spasm and pain. Epidural injection, the evidence is weak in acute low back pain. Epidural injection is strong for the short-term relief of chronic low back pain and limited for long-term relief of chronic low back pain. What is not supported by evidence? The facet injection, the orthosis, the traction, the magnets, and there is insufficient evidence to support the use of acupuncture or dry needle therapy. There is moderate evidence supporting spine manipulation, especially in acute back pain. Basic body mechanics, activity modification, and behavioral modification can reduce the symptoms of low back pain. The patient should learn the proper technique of sitting, standing, lifting, and lying down. The disc pressure is lowest when the patient is supine. And the highest disc pressure is when a patient is sitting, leaning forward and carrying weight. In general, when you carry weight, try to have the weight close to the body. Postural changes in the disc itself and movement of the spine in certain way can affect the pressure inside the disc and can affect also the pain of the patient. In general, if the patient does not have red flags, then conservative treatment with anti-inflammatory medications and physiotherapy is sufficient and no further workup is necessary initially. A cognitive behavioral therapy, in addition to non-surgical treatment, can improve the functional outcome and decrease the pain and the disability of the patient. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.